Because, you know, how are we going to fix the school? Well, you know, that's something that we can look to do. Influence that we could have influences is in the family. So we can be in the family and we can make changes there. The family has to have a mother and a father because the father teaches the rough and tumble, teaches the how to integrate your aggression, teaches you where the limits are of your physical comfort. Children can learn in families. Sometimes they have to learn when they are adults or it leads to problems because they do not know how to behave properly because nobody taught them when they were small. Hi everybody. Uh, today I talk with Birgit Kelly. She's a German journalist born in Romania in 1975 and a citizen of Germany since 1984. She's written extensively on feminism, gender and motherhood for newspapers and magazines in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. She is the mother of four children, and she has stayed, she stayed home with her kids. She started to look at how the feminist narrative was not supporting her, and so she started to look into it more directly to see what she had learned from feminism wasn't working anymore now that she was a stay-at-home mother. So, I thought I would talk to her, and uh, we had a good conversation about mostly about family. I would say about raising children, and um, it was very enjoyable. Um, Birgit is a member of the Christian Democratic Party in Germany. She's frequently invited to give her expertise on panels and in front of parliamentary committees. Uh, she's mother of women. Uh, after the year 2000, which lobbies for a new feminism that respects motherhood and the dignity of life. Her work has made her one of the LGBT lobby's most hated journalists in her home country. She considers that a badge of honor. Uh, there'll be some links to her Facebook page and her Twitter page afterwards. Uh, I had a really great time. We had a really great time in Germany. They hosted us there in Berlin just a couple of days ago, and it was a really uh, nice introduction into German society. Uh, very grateful for their uh, companionship. And uh, now I hope you enjoy our conversation. Thanks very much. Hi, Birgit. Hi, Tammy. Nice to see you again. Very nice to see you. And uh, it's not been long. It's just been a couple of days, right? Yes, we just met in Berlin. So yeah, yeah. yeah wow, that was wonderful. And you guys, you hosted us. Uh, we felt right at home. It was it was really really nice. It was a pleasure, and uh, I think everybody you met was also very very glad to meet you. And yeah, it was we had just a good so time. Much fun. I yes. think you know where I'm from in northern Alberta. There's lots of northern European people. And so I think coming to a place like Germany feels pretty familiar, even though, well, at least you spoke English, otherwise I wouldn't have understood anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know wouldn't my, have felt so much like okay. Yeah, yeah. So now I um I hope my English is okay for everyone to good. understand. It's very because, good because you know, um I hate it a little bit because you know in Germany I'm working with my language, it's with my mother language, you know, as I'm a journalist and author, then uh, writing and expressing myself uh, is is my job. So and then when you skip to another language, it's always so uh, oh I, I want sometimes words are missing, you know. Right. Well, I, I don't think you're going to have any words missing. I've been reading your manuscript that you sent me in PDF form, and uh, your your writing style is wonderful and perfect and right on the mark. So uh, we're Thank all you. good here. Yeah, <laughs> we're all good here. Okay, so I'll do just a quick introduction. Um, Berget is a German journalist born in Romania in 1975. Uh, 1984, a citizen of Germany. 1984, is that what I said? Yes, 1984, yes. a citizen of Germany. Uh, Berget has written extensively on feminism, gender, and motherhood for newspapers and magazines in, in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. Uh, you have a number of best-selling manuscripts that I'll talk about later. But really what I want to say is that... Um, 
You are the president of the German women's nonprofit Frau 2000 plus. It means women's women's uh, in the year 2000 and plus. So women's for the next century. You know? Right, right. Women for the next century, which lobbies for a new feminism that respects motherhood and the dignity of life. Her work has made her one of the LGBT lobby's most hated journalists in her home country. She considers that a badge of honor. And so welcome to my <laughs> podcast, Berget. And we're going to have... Well, I don't know where it's going to go. It's going to go where it goes. <laughs> I don't. I, me either. I don't know. So, so. Well, I'm I uh, I read a little bit about your um, your pilgrimage to Spain. I read a little bit about that that you sent me. I read your manuscript. Uh, this book. Yeah. That's n that's not been translated yet into English, but. Uh, you have translated it just hasn't been published yet yeah uh there's there's some english yeah i wrote about the war on everything that is normal yeah yeah you really did uh i went through it and you go through uh you go through society and in in every way you go through the mm, the troubles that we have relating to each other between the sexes, men and women, you go through motherhood and what has been done really through the, I would say through the feminist movement largely and how, uh, and through universities and, and how the language has changed and uh, to benefit a, a narrative that isn't our traditional narrative. And so uh, I'm curious to know, how, how did you get started in all of this? I think, you know, um, when I started writing, um, I was uh, quite a young mother, you know. So um, mm -hmm. I, I started first law and then I changed to journalism. And um, and then I became a mother uh, when I was uh, quite young. Uh, I was um, pregnant with uh, 23 years. Uh, when I was 23, uh, the first time. And, you know, I am I belong to this, uh, I think, lucky generation of young women who was always told you can be everything, you know, you can have it, everything. And I believe this. And uh, I had no no bor uh, no borders to cross when I was a young woman, not in school, not in my family, not everywhere. So I really believe, yes, I can be anything I want. And this is, uh, um, so I, I would say, uh, so I believed I'm an em emancipated young woman and then I got pregnant, you know? <laughs> and then I decided uh, uh, to change on the other side uh, uh, to, to be a housewife and raise my child in the first years on my own. And that was the point uh, where everybody got upset. Uh, everybody around me. So how did they know that you were doing this? And so I, I, you know, at that moment I was working. I was in my first job as a as a journalist, and I quit when I uh, when I. Uh, um, when my first child came and then you have to decide also uh, how long you you quit your job you have to tell this and uh, so and I decided you know, you know now I'm, I'm raising my child so um, and uh, nobody understood really so not my girlfriends not my bigger family not uh, uh, not society uh, and not my female colleagues so everybody says, so why are you doing this? You don't need to. You can give your child as soon as possible to childcare, and then you come back and you can work on your career. You just started, you know. For what uh, did you go to university? Uh, so uh, so uh, and nobody just understood that I just wanted to raise my child, that it was no question for me anymore. Also, before I belonged to this generation of young men, uh, so if you had asked me before I was pregnant, I would have told you another story, you know, so it, it mm -hmm. confused mm -hmm. me quite myself uh, that mm -hmm. how it changed my mind that I wasn't talking anymore about uh, the children of other women, but about my own child, you know, and it changed me. So I discovered myself how being pregnant and expecting a child and then bearing, uh, giving birth to a child uh, just changed me completely. 
uh, and nobody understood. <laughs> so, so this was a motherhood made with me. And then, um, you know, it confused me that um, the same women that always told me you can be everything and we fight for you and we fight for a woman to make a free decision how she wants to live, that the same women told me, no, you can't be a housewife. No. Um, so, so they did not, <laughs> they, they liked to me because I can be everything except the housewife. So this is the right answer. And then uh, it, in the first time in my life, I, I think I started with 24 and, or 25 just to read about feminism because I just wanted to get the, the answer why they don't like me. Why do they do they fight me? Why do they fight motherhood so, so strongly? So this was the first time I, I began reading feminist theories because I did not need feminism, you know? I can speak up on my own. And, mm -hmm. you know, I saw that family politics is not working it is not working for me you know everybody also in politics they did uh, they don't do politics for women to to be uh, to for the possibility to raise your child but they do everything to get your child away from you and get you again back to the to the labor market so um so everybody wanted to free me you know uh, they did not ask me if, if I want this, but everybody uh, uh, wanted uh, to free myself from my life. So and politics, feminism, the labor market, everybody was going on me. So come back to work and give your child away to somebody else to raise it. So this is why I understood when I understood something is going badly wrong here. And uh, uh, so, so uh, um, I went deeper in, in all this family politics, feminism, and then I found uh, uh, at once uh, the topic of gender very early. Um, mm -hmm. And this was, you know, my, my, my eldest daughter is now 23 herself. So, so, so uh, uh, 20 years ago already, uh, the gender topic, you could see it was there. Uh, so every time I wanted to make research on feminism, I landed up uh, uh, on, on gender. So so I began already 20 years ago to do, to uh, to go on this topic and trying to understand what what this means. What do they mean with gender politics instead of women's politics? So why do they talk about gender and not about sex? So, and it was obvious already 20 years ago, but nobody wanted to listen. So it, when, when you talked about uh, gender politics and gender mainstreaming and what they really mean, so, so what theory is behind this and that this is not about women's rights and this is not about emancipation, but it is uh, about erasing the category of femininity. Um, uh, everybody told you know this is no this is not real you're just just telling stories this is just uh, kids discussing on university weird stuff and this will never come true and now 20 years later we are making laws on it <laughs> so so it came true but uh, this is how I I, I went uh, in this topic because I and I discovered that everything that is said does not fit to my life Mm -hmm. And you, uh, so you were living, uh, you were married? Yeah. Married. And uh, how many children do you have now? Um, I have four children. I have, yeah, you uh, have four, four children, children between 14 and 23. So two boys and two girls. So so this is also, you know, I, I experienced the differences of sexes in my own, <laughs> own family, mm -hmm. how, how different boys and girls can be. Also, they have the same parents and were raised in the same family. It is just something different. How, how old is your son? Or do you have more than one son? Uh, yes, yes. So I have a daughter with 23 and a son with mm -hmm. 21 and one with 17. And a, my youngest girl is 14 at the moment. So you told me a story about um, your 23-year-old daughter, your oldest daughter. Yeah. And realizing that she was the eldest and that she had to know how to take care of herself. Yeah. Would you, would you just tell me that story again quickly? Yeah, it's just uh, you know, um, um, I, I I took her to a self defense uh, uh, workshop um, mm -hmm. because you know uh, when we 
um, the times are getting rough outside. Uh, and I I had a teenage daughter and with all this my, my migration crisis in Germany starting in 2015, it was mm -hmm. uh, on the streets, it was not safe anymore for women. Uh, and, uh, so so we did not feel safe anymore. And I took her to this uh, to this uh, self-defense uh, um, workshop where we were trained uh, not to freeze in the moment when we are attacked because this is so typically female um, that when we are attacked, uh, we, we don't get aggressive because uh, women don't get so easily aggressive as, as, as men. No, we do. retreat. Usually we re retreat, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, and this is not only well because we are educated like this, but normally, you know, yes, women care for others; they don't attack them, uh, and um, so so we needed to be taught both of us. Uh, I never attacked uh, uh, aggressively or uh, went on somebody else in my whole life, and she uh, she didn't do it either. So. Uh, so, so for the first time of our life, uh, we we had to learn how to really uh, punch men if mm -hmm. they go on us, and uh, it was, you know, it was it was uh, uh, very. Um, no, I was uh, surprised about myself, about my strengths, and I was surprised about the strengths of my, of my my daughter when I saw her going in a fight and using words uh, she never used before <laughs> by punching uh, another another man but you know what really was touching in this group you know we, were, we we've been in this workshop a group of very different uh, of very different women it was young women and it was also elder women it was also a police officer and everybody was there for training and after the first day of this workshop uh, um, our train uh, uh, the uh, the guys who trained us, they, they sent us home with the question, why are you worth to survive? You know, um, because, you know, they tried to explain us, if you don't defend yourself, so maybe you will die. There will be a situation where you uh, may, be, may be hurt and, and uh, men go on you and you could die. So so you have to be aware of this and to, to be aware, to get this, this aggression, you need to defend yourself. You need to be aware why it is important, why you are worth it to survive this situation, because only then you will. And, and and they left us with the question and the, to and, and to go to sleep and report the next morning and it was so touching the next morning um to hear all um everybody had made uh, uh, her thoughts about it and me too and uh, I realized that my 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 answer I gave there was because I'm a mother you know because I'm mm -hmm. a mother I need to survive because. I have four children I have to care for, I have to protect them. So so I need to survive because only then my kids will survive. This was my answer. And, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, I think we, we both, as a mother, it was, and, and, and we had some, some years later, later we had a situation uh, where my, my eldest daughter reminded me on this when I was, uh, I don't know what we were talking about and and energy and then she suddenly reminded me you, uh, she said you promised you promised that you will uh, you will uh, uh, all protect us you know mm -hmm. then when we were in this workshop you promised you know you promised you will do this and i said yes i promise and i will uh but she did not forget it either what i said in, the, in, in this small round of women that I said, you know, my reason to live and to survive is to protect you. How old was your daughter when you took the course? 17. She was, you Seven, know, 17, which, right? yes, just a teenager by starting going out at night and stuff. So it's the moment mm. when you when you get scared as a as a mother. So if you want your you want your your girl to be protected and uh, and now what does she do what does she do now now she's a police officer and I think she can't defend herself and she's a, <laughs> actually she's got a gun now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but I hope she won't hear. She, there's no, would, there will be no yes. need to use it, you know. So because yes. this is also something, you know, they taught us the best fight is not to fight. So it's not only to learn how to fight, but mostly to learn also as a woman how to avoid to go oh, in yeah. dangerous situations, that. you know, mm -hmm. because, because, um, you know, um, when it comes to a fight, uh, we don't talk about gender, we talk about sex and biology. And then, and then as a woman, if you go on, uh, if you go on a man, um, uh, you are the weak part. So we will always be weaker because, uh, we are not so tall. We are not so strong. So, so as a woman, you have to, play tactics also, or sometimes, you know, uh, uh, and um, what it made with me, and I think with every woman who went to this workshop was, you know, I'm walking now with another awareness when I'm in, in public, especially when I'm in situations where I am alone in the dark or on train stations at night and stuff like this, you know, um, you have to learn not to look like a victim. And if you are aware of your own strengths, then you don't look like a victim, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And 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 also already this reduces um, your risk to be attacked, because those men uh, who want to attack women, they watch you. And you know what they did this first time uh, on the, the first hour when we started this workshop it was very interesting. Um, they said, "Scream." Scream so uh, as loud as you as you can, and then you know we were a group of about twelve women, and 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 we screamed in this gym. And he said, "No, I told you to scream as loud as you can," and we did it again, and we thought, "Okay, we are really loud, you know." <laughs> and then he said again, "So no," and then he got, you know. Uh, 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 um, our drill instructor, <laughs> I could tell, he, he went suddenly very angry and shouted on us in a way, you know, so I told you you should scream now. And, and, and really, he really went on us and we also, <gasps> and then I said, so now scream and not like a pussy, he said, really like this. And then, you know, we screamed in a way, this whole gym jumped, I think, and <laughs> because, you know, he made us angry. And then, you know, really, we were, I think, 10 times louder suddenly. And, and when we stopped, he said, so you can do this, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, you know, you have to learn this. So screaming, just being loud. If somebody goes in this and you, and you shout to him like you did the first time, he will laugh about you. But the second, the last scream we did, you know, he knows you are not an easy victim. <laughs> so, and then, and then maybe it goes, he, he will go away. He will go away. He will try to find another woman. And this is also something, you know, there are women who are talking then, uh, yes, but but then he will grab another woman. Yes, this may be true. But this moment is, uh, do you want to protect another woman from being grabbed? Or are you worth to survive? So this is why, you know, you have to 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 realize as a woman so why I, am i here so why am am i important because we are not taught to be important you know and mm -hmm. i think this is yeah, maybe yeah. something where the feminist movement uh has a point a little bit sure you know? sure because, of course. yeah you got to give the devil his due yeah <laughs> <laughs> So, so some things, you know, we are taught as boys uh, and, and we are taught as girls uh, and some things we have to change in teaching the boys and also in teaching, in teaching women. So this is, you know, uh, 20 years later, I'm doing workshops, training women also to oh, speak up. Yes. Yes. Oh, so with oh, my see. women's NGO, for example, we, 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 uh, now Corona stopped this because, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm, but I think we will do this again. Now we did workshops for training, training, uh, women who are working in NGOs, trying to, uh, and, and train them how to argue and how to, but also how to keep standing in a discussion. And, you know, um, the first day is just about self-confidence. 
just just to tr- to to teach them and to show themselves how how good they are because they don't believe you know they don't believe mm-hmm. they are good mm-hmm. but they don't believe in it so so the first step is just to to make sure that they are aware that they they can do so much and that they are already so good in what they are doing but they don't believe it themselves and this is i think so so i discovered when I, i'm working and with uh, and discussing with other women now for a lot of years and this is uh, um always coming back you know women who do not believe in their own strengths in their own own potential so this is thinking i think something we we have to uh, still train well you know if we i'm thinking of the feminist movement and how we have this victim narrative yeah now, and that that is the thing to keep us safe but it can't be done from the outside right it has to be done from the inside and i i've been hearing something about if you don't say, take that upon yourself to realize your worth on the inside, then it will manifest itself on the outside. And th- and so I think what we're seeing in this whole victim narrative that permeates our societies, uh, that it's on the outside now. And so that's very interesting that you're teaching people to uh, take this and make it a part of them Yeah, from the inside. Very important. What, how does, how, so your son, you said is 21 and 17. Yeah. And they've grown up. I know that in Germany, uh, the school system, you there's no homeschooling. No, no. It is uh, even forbidden by state, you know. In, in right. Germany, everybody has to go to school, to a public school or to a private school, but which is all on an, an official applied school. Right. So how was their, how, what was their education like, the boys? And were they encouraged? Were they encouraged at school as well, uh, the same way the girls were encouraged? Or how did it differ? Um, I think my, my boys were uh, quite lucky that they also had uh, uh, male teachers mm-hmm. um, from the beginning. Um, so they they had a role model also in, in, in school. But mm-hmm. um, it is a, a rising problem in Germany too that the whole um, uh, school and also kindergarten, is, that's from the kindergarten, we have only women working over there. And mm-hmm. um, being a boy is a mate to a problem, masculinity. So a masculine behavior um, is not supposed to be normal anymore. But every aggression, every normal uh, behavior as a boy is said to be toxic masculinity. So um, so what we discover at the moment in Germany, uh, and it's getting stronger uh, in especially, you know, when all the younger teachers, they were taught this at university, you know, that you have to go against this. So so if, if, if boys are beating up on the playground, then that this is a problem, you know, and then you have to talk it out and stuff like this. But but uh, so so just normal masculine behavior is made pathologic. Uh, um, how do you spell this? Pen- pathologic. Pathologic. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, while uh, at the same time, girls are encouraged to show more aggression. So, so, so uh, what we can see at the moment uh, that boys and girls are encouraged to change roles. So, 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 so the girls behave more like boys, and the boys should behave more like the girls do. Um, yeah, this is how this is, that is yes, how strange it is, uh, and I, um, I think you know um, at uh, when 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 this is uh, when this is the theory that is working in in, in schools, then it is uh, even more important that at home, in the family, boys get uh, another point of view on this. So because they need, you know, they are different. It is a different sex. So so they have another natural behavior. And uh, on one hand, this is very good, but on the other hand. They have to learn how to keep their aggression in 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 a, in a, in a um, and, and to integrate to their aggression. Yes, yeah. yes, and to handle mm-hmm. it. So so because in in some ways it is it is good that they are like they are, uh, mm-hmm. but they they need to learn um, when to keep calm. 
I think right. this is something. This is something that boys have to do to learn uh, more, maybe than than girls have to do. Uh, but if there is no correction from home, you know, when, from from to what is uh, taught in schools, um, then um, then we get a problem. And what we also what what you can see in statistics is. Um, that um, um, that the boys are, su uh, are more often supposed uh, to be said to be ill, uh, to be um, and to to get tranquilizers, so this uh, Ritalin and stuff like this. Yes. Um, uh, if you see the if you watch the statistics, then you can see that it is uh, I think about eighty percent of children who get tranquilizers because uh, the, because uh, uh, um, their the teachers or the, their even their parents say you know they are aggressive they are they are complicated. It is about eighty percent boys. So so normal normal behavior of boys is now said you know you have to get treatment to get calm so they calm down the boys. Yeah, um, and they, to make them sit in the school. Yeah, uh, sometimes they do that when rough and tumble play mm -hmm. is so important. And having, uh, if you don't, the problem is, is the families now aren't together. And the father in the family often teaches rough and tumble play to her boys, to their boys. And so the, now that we have uh, because, you know, how are we going to fix the school? Well, you know, that's something that we can look to do. But the only, the place of influence that we could have influences is in the family, like you say, right? So we can be in the family and we can make changes there. But the family has to have a mother and a father because the father teaches the rough and tumble, teaches the how to integrate your aggression, teaches you where the limits are of your physical uh Comfort, you know, you know, I remember when my kids were were little, my husband would be playing with them on the couch and it would make me kind of uncomfortable because the play was very uh, boisterous, you know, and I'd be afraid that my little kids were going to be hurt. But my son, I can remember one time saying, mom, mom, that's OK. <laughs> mom, that's OK, because he wanted to be with his dad. He wanted to learn his his limits and 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 how strong he could be and so did my daughter you know like both of those things my my husband taught them both in rough and tumble play but boys really need that and sitting in school is is tricky because they have to sit still for so long and giving them Ritalin just it is no uh that that's not a that's not a learning moment you know that that's definitely that's a coercive moment I, I found out that, uh, some very uh, um, interesting um, statistics uh, in uh, different countries um, about what is um, so uh, which problems uh, come up when children are not raised with fathers. So if they if they are raised right. and the father is missing, and just two different things, you know, when you see when you see uh, um, uh, the young man in prison. If you if you if you make statistics about a young man uh, getting criminal uh, or taking drugs and 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 uh, you know so um, taking up um, a criminal career, then you mm -hmm. can say by ninety percent or stuff like this uh, that uh, they were raised they were missing a father, so they were raised only with their uh, from their mom. And uh, they did not have, obviously, um, uh, um, a good role model uh, in their life uh, for um, a masculine role model. So, um, so not every boy that is raised without a father goes uh, went uh, goes criminal. But if you watch the criminals, then you can say by ninety percent that they were missing a father in their life. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. on the other hand, you know, um, um, I, I found the statistics in Great Britain about uh, when I was uh, doing research on um, on teenage uh, um, uh, teenage mothers and abortion and stuff like this and uh, and if you see at the statistics what kind of of, of girls um, are teenage mothers so getting pregnant very early as a teenager then you can also say it's the girls that are raised without fathers so so a, a different reaction on missing a father is that that the young girls are not trained 
um, properly, obviously, uh, to uh, uh, with uh, with men. So so a girl also learns from fa from a father the first time how to how to interact with male persons. Um, and if there isn't a strong father figure in her life, she can train on how she behaves, uh, how to behave as a woman, and how what what kind of reaction she gets. If she has no brothers and and no father, um, then those those uh, young teenagers are more likely, you know, to to end up with a man that is not good for her. And very early, having sex very early, going very early on uh, relationships with boys to, uh, or e even men who are not good for them and getting pregnant very early. I'd like so to talk about that more. So first of all, if I know a statistic as well that if uh, uh, children are born and they don't grow up with their father, the telomeres on their DNA are shorter. Oh, wow. And the, and the men, the boys' telomeres are shorter than the girls' telomeres because of a lack of father, and that's the sign of how long you're going to live. I mean, it's one indication of how mm -hmm. long you're going to live is the telomere length on your DNA, and so that is a, a brutal statistic about the lack of fathers. That's for sure. And um, I want to say something about women because girls growing up without fathers, well. So this is something that I've been rattling around. See what you think of this. So I was thinking about stat status for girls. How do women, how do girls have status? Because we talk about men and their status and how, you know, men, they have, they, uh, they via, they, they fight for position. They fight for position and, uh, they, the best man wins. And so that's the guy that's on yeah. top and they kind of, you know, they, they, they have a distribution of men besides that. But what's women's, because there's got to be status for women. And so I've been thinking about where stat, where women find status. Uh, because it's not in, it in terms of sexual attraction to men, it's not, it's not how much they've attained in their career. That, that's not no, right. No, it, no, right? it, this, this, this even makes it worse, I think, uh, you know? Um, so we, we also know that, um, that when we, when it goes on real uh, relationships between men and women, so so uh, how we uh, choose our partners, we don't we don't know much, you know. I, I right. sometimes we still live in caves uh, and on trees. I think uh, on this because we uh, uh, there is a paradox in what women say they want and and in what they really choose. So so uh, mm -hmm. it is said, uh, especially in those theories, you know, that women are now looking for men who who. Want Want to talk to them and they were kind and 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 you know so so and we really like those men you know it is nice to to meet somebody you can talk to and who really listens to you how many how many uh, um <laughs> women are married to a husband who is really listening so so we are missing this so yes we like this and i think this is also why you know uh, the most uh, most of the women are uh, can be very good friends with gay men you know uh, mm -hmm. uh, because um we we can talk very very good with each other so so this is what is said you know uh, the, the the young men of today they have to be like this more feminine more more soft more talking more listening and stuff like this and we told we, we, we've told this to the young men now for about 20 years uh, and they discover now that but we won't marry them we will marry the one with the good job and with the big car so yeah, yeah it's the last <laughs> thing a man wants to hear is that a woman thinks he's her best friend oh yeah <laughs> Because that's as far as he's going to get. <laughs> yes, uh, but but you know this is um um you know I think that the the roles changed. You know this is something that really happened in the last in the last decades. You know so that there was a reason for the feminist movement. There was a good reason to start this one hundred years ago because we did not have for legal equality. You know so so I think from the starting point, I think when uh, one hundred years ago I would have stood on the other side too. 
you know, I would have uh, from from my temperature, <laughs> I I would have stood on the streets fighting for women's rights because it was not fair, and there was a good reason um, to to really make a uh, fight for laws for equality uh, um, between men and women, and. Um, we, we we conquered the labor market. So, so but uh, um, you know, what I discovered is, you know, women have changed a lot in the in the in the last five or six decades. So, by entering the labor market, by by uh, uh, having your own money, your own job, uh, being in more independent, uh, has changed women. We have gained more options. And this was this is on one side it is good that we broke some some gender roles, but the problem is we did not discover new ones. So what is done? We decon we have deconstructed really a lot of uh, very very strict roles and uh, and and have opened up to our world and our opportunities we have we can take. But now we have to decide. So there is a new problem because before also women did not have more much decision, but for a lot of women this was this was okay. We discover now and now a lot of women have to make hard decisions on whether mm -hmm. what to do now so should i be become children and when and how many and should i marry or not should i work or should i so 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 and, and the, those opportunities are one on one hand good but it is also now you have to make a lot of decisions that were formally just made by uh, society and, and biology with, Yes, and, and biology, and, and biology, mm -hmm. and now we have to decide on everything. You know, if you just uh, uh, take the example of contraception, you know, so uh, in, in in the former ages, you as a woman, you could not decide if you if you um, if you are expecting children, um, and um, and this is was good and bad, you know. But now, yeah. as we have to decide, we discover that we don't know how to decide. And most right. women, yeah, they put this decision away. They think, okay, I have still time. And 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 later, and society and feminism, and everybody says, do it later. Now you're skilled, you have to work. So take, uh, work on your self-empowerment as a working uh, woman. And and um, so so they delay. Uh, it's um, There's a delay in this decision. And we have a rising problem now of women who discover very late that they want to get mothers and then biology is coming on them yeah. um, and it is not possible anymore. So we changed the roles of women changed more than the roles of men did. Mm, yes, so much so, more. Yeah, men have been and, and, pretty And now everybody steady. is confused. And and, and yeah. now everybody is confused. And this is, uh, we are we are in, in an era now, I think, where uh, both men and women are confused how to come together if they should come together uh, because everything was changed and nobody told them how to do this we have to still to learn it uh what yeah well te how our to technology is yeah. so powerful and our understanding it takes a long time for us to understand and to um take apart and and understand at every detail how things have changed i mean we have a birth control pill now. Who knows what that's done, right? Maybe that's what we're seeing in part is the aftermath of the, of women being in control of their biology. What does that do to women? And what does that do to men? And what does that do to marriage? What does that do to the family? It's we like, don't it, even know. Um, you know, it, it looks like the, it's a gold medal with two sides, you know? Because on the on one hand it is uh, it is it is uh, an achievement that we can decide not at the moment to go, to to get pregnant, yeah. so this this was uh, on one hand it was empowerment also for mm -hmm. the sexual life of women so 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 not to be always afraid that you can get pregnant. So on one hand you can say yes it freed also sexuality for women. Um, as it was always more free for men, but on the other side now, um, we, um, we 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 gave ourselves away. You know now uh, men also know there is contraception, so you can have sex without 
um, yeah, exactly. without duty, you know? And, and what's um, that's not good for men because the whole idea was for us to learn responsibility. And if a man can have sex with a woman and not worry about her becoming pregnant, there's no responsibility there. And there's no responsibility for the woman either. So it, because it takes that responsibility away, I, I don't know what that has done to us. It was a it was a basic responsibility that there may be a baby, and now that that but, now that's gone. It, it, so but it's also it, it's also another factor, you know. Uh, everybody now is expecting from you as a woman to have sex. Um, yeah, right. um, you know, you know. Before you can say, okay, there was no sex until marriage. Uh, yes, and they right. said, okay, we need a sexual revolution. We have to free this. So this is not fair. And, and you, you, everybody should, should have sex and uh, should be allowed to have sex in whatever relationship you are, you are or not, or just sex to one night stand and stuff like this. And it was, you know, they, they, they sold it as, a, as, a, 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 as free, a freedom. And, and, and it was, it was, um, it was uh, revolutionary. Uh, But mm -hmm. now everybody is also expecting you, also as a young woman, to have sex. So if you if you if you deny, or if you say, oh no, only in a in a very in a strong relationship, or only if you marry me, they say, what are you? So so uh, you, a, a woman telling you things like this, they think, oh, this is weird, you know, that she she wants a, a relationship. She wants to be married first. So this is like middle age now. Um, so everybody is expecting now also for young for, from young women to be sexy, to have sex. Uh, um, and I don't think this is good, you know. And, and if if no. if contraception does not work, then you can abort it, you know, it's no problem. Right. So That's so right. so abortion is the abortion is also on the other side of this gold medal, is uh is is that you know, we separate it. We separate. Um in former times, you know, we we had sex and, and love and marriage, they belong together, and now we are splitting, we are separating every part of it. So so the first step is just sex without relationship. Um, mm -hmm. And now, and, and, and the next step was separating sex from having children. Mm -hmm. and, and now um, the next step is being pregnant and deciding whether to have the baby yes, or not. Yes, yes. Having that be a decision. Yes, that's and a, this is the way we separate. Too we much. separate. We separate from each other all those things that once belonged, for good reason, all together. Yeah, right. And we've lost. And we've lost that guide. We've definitely lost that guide because now we don't have any moral teachings. There's no moral teachings in the school. Uh, if if, if there's moral teachings in the if, home. Yeah, I just wanted to say I don't think this this is the uh, something that the school has to do. You know, I think this no, is no. this is this is something you know morals morals in school. Um, I, I would not like this for my children because uh, somebody then will define. You know, and then yeah. you you would have uh, um, to define it for the whole class. And but every family is different. Every family has uh, uh, um, different views on things, uh, not only mm -hmm. politically, but maybe also. Also religious or not religious or different religious religion. Mm -hmm. So, so I don't think that moral is something uh, that should be it belongs to schools, but it belongs in the family and in in your neighborhood and in society. So, there's where, where moral and ethics should should uh, be um, um, discovered and, and and given to the next generation. And and we lack of this because. Um, Most families split, uh, um, split uh, not not only that they they, they split up, but but uh, you know you don't spend much time anymore with each other, and this right. is a it's strategy. Like the family dinners, family dinners aren't. It's even. not only dinner; it's the whole day. It's the whole yeah. day also, and the smaller a kid is, the more important it is that you spend time together because a child mm -hmm. does not learn in quality time. You know the biggest lie of the feminist movement. Is quality time, you know? They mm -hmm. they uh, they tell they tell the young women, you know, it does not matter. It doesn't matter how how much time you spend with your child, but 
this should be quality oh, yeah. time. <laughs> I, I wrote about a, a lot about quality time because, you know, I raised four children and I always thought, so what is quality time in our family? So, mm -hmm. so how do you measure the quality uh, of the time you spend? Uh, because, you know, is it quality time? If we just sit on the couch and say nothing, is it quality time if we cook together? Somebody would say no. So, so quality time is, you know, oh, come on, kids, let's spend quality time. Then nobody would come, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but quality time is just being to, together, being available, being there if somebody wants to talk because you have to catch those moments and those moments are not if you if if you go to your kids and ask oh no, no tell me everything because i have you know i have a time window of 45 <laughs> minutes now and everybody of you is getting 10 minutes so please tell me what is touching you this day and and what uh, was at school so no no child would talk to you as a mother if you put it like this, so 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 quality time is the biggest line uh, of of, mm -hmm. of this um, of convincing women to give away their children and and to give them in in, in daycare to go to to work uh, and to just to tell them it is okay because it's not okay, you know. And um, I, I I know that young women don't want to hear this, but it is not okay, you know. Your child, as 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 smaller a child is, um, the more time it needs you. And, and it I needs you very think, fast. It needs you when it when like the need now. comes up. Right yes, now, right, right now, right. a, a three-year-old child cannot wait until you uh, uh, pick him up at five p.m. You know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it needs you now. Yeah, I was also thinking about the adolescent and how difficult it is to have the right moment so that you can uh, have that quality time. Mm. Because you can't just ask for it. It isn't just there because you're, they're busy. They have other things that they're doing and thinking about, but now and then. So I used to walk my son to school in the morning, mm -hmm. not to school, to uh, the bus stop at the mm -hmm. corner because I had to walk the dog. And so I just put walking the dog and walking my son to the bus every morning as a, uh, a daily occurrence. And if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't know what he was when he was in grade 10 or 11 I wouldn't know what his plans were for the day but sometimes on the way to the bus he'd tell me mm -hmm. and and I was always thinking oh isn't this wonderful that I have this little bit of time and it was only um three blocks three short blocks to the bus it wasn't a very long time uh we didn't go to the park with the dog we just walked on the sidewalk to the bus stop and I said goodbye but in that time I would sometimes find something out yeah. And so those adolescents, it's very tricky yeah. to find the time. And, you know, when we, when we, when you take a look on yourself, I think even as an adult, we are the same, you know, you, you, mm -hmm. um, when, when my child comes from school and I ask, is uh, Ed, Ed is throwing his bag on the, in the corner and immediately going in his room and if you ask then is there something has something happened no right right yeah so uh and and um i i think there are also uh you you can we 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 too have this uh, behavior as adults you know sometimes we need time to talk you know it's not when you are asked um then you can then you talk but sometimes uh, there has to be, you, you have to uh, calm down or to get in the right mood, to have the right situation. So you, you uh, take a heart and, and tell what, what, what is on your heart. And um, yes, it needs the situation also, the right situation for adults too. So we cannot expect from children or from teenagers that they just immediately react on our questions. We have to create we have to create uh, those those opportunities, these the, these windows where 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 they uh, get in this mood. Sometimes I had this when when we drove by car or when we do were standing in the kitchen preparing a meal or so, and sometimes just they start talking, you know, and you don't know why now. Um, or sometimes uh, you know, uh, uh, sometimes my seventeen year old comes so oh. 
should we sh- should we see a film this evening and so you know if if a 70 year old asks so yes you you do this you know just to spend time together spending time together you know and this this whole society is getting so fast everything the whole world is ge- is getting faster and faster and i think um if you are aware of this you know that slowing down is luxury you know staying calm not being loud just to get slow um spending time together not in a rush not in a hurry and a lot of families are in a hurry you know in the morning if every, if if both parents have to work and i know that politics makes them gives them only this opportunity that both have to work and this is a strategy you know we could do it in another way in family politics because it also costs money that somebody else is caring for my child so why don't give it to the mother herself but it makes they make us uh, um, uh, being in a hurry the whole time so in the morning everything has to go fast then you bring children to daycare to school you go to your job then in the afternoon then then we all spend the time the whole day in different places uh, and even even my four children wouldn't have spent the day together because they are different ages and so they are yeah, on different schools and different classrooms so so all members of the family don't spend the day together and then in the evening when we are all tired and full of everything then we come together maybe there is an eruption because everybody you know wants to be seen and nobody has the strength anymore to see the, the other ones everybody is expecting something and w- will not get what he expects and then we get disappointed about our relationships and then we go to bed you know and when this is everyday life of a family so there is no uh, you know that they split up it's no wonder there's no there's no mm. wonder that that a marriage is split up if you only live like this so spending time having time is maybe is is maybe the the the, the most important thing so to organize that 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 we could that we can still spend time together as human beings and not just being busy the whole day with important things but not with the people we love yeah, at that end, love, love is at the basis of, as you get older, you realize, I think, love is at the basis of everything. And if you don't have, if you don't have that, uh, the world becomes too hush. That's the only way to keep uh, this uh, space that you talk about, that space, eh? that's, that's trust, right? That's trust and uh, kindness. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes something happens and it's upsetting, but another time to give it space and to let it find its place so that you can understand it better before you engage again. Because this, we're in kind of in a reaction type uh, society now where everything is a reaction. Twitter is a reaction, you know, all the social medias, those are reactions. And, uh, there's no, uh, contemplation. There's no meditation. There's no moment where you reflect. There's no self-reflection. And that's where you get, uh, where you can sometimes find a better way is in those moments with each other, right? There's, when you give yourselves that time. So I agree. If if we're going to survive, if our families are going to prosper, we need to give each other time, uh, space to respond, and recognize that uh, we don't have the answers either. Because we think we have to have all the answers. We have all this information. We have all, right, all these yes. computers. We have Google. We we must know everything. But but you know what is interesting? When I wrote my 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 book about motherhood, um I, I did some research because you know in Germany we all um in, in, in the political um discourse uh, we always discuss how many how many mother needs a child. This question, 
So, mm-hmm. so, uh, so can can a mother be so? So when can we give away our children without without doing harm on them? So we discuss it. When can we go to work and give them in daycare? So uh, and the slogan is how many, how much mother needs a child? Mm-hmm. Okay, and mm-hmm. if you Google this. Uh, in, 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 in German, you get a lot of stuff, you know, uh, different theories, articles, everything. And mostly is about, you know, it's only three months and then you can give it away or after half a year. It's no problem because everybody can take this mother role and then you can give your child away and, and, and it will be perfect. Everything will be OK. And, you know, I discovered as a mother that... Um, that um, especially with the newborn and with the babies, it, it it broke my heart every time when I had to give away my child, you know, mm-hmm. um, um, because you know you are always you you are hide you 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 really you really look after small babies, you know. It just um, you are always uh, anxious that something will come on your child. So this is why my 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 book is called Mother Animal translated, you know, because I say this is instinct, you know, that we protect our children as uh, uh, as lions. Uh, um, this is, uh, you know, this is in us. Uh, this is this is biology. This is not a decision, you know, to protect your child is not a decision as a mother or as a father. Uh, um, and and I discovered, you know, the question for me as a as a as a woman was not was not uh, um, how many uh, how much of me needs my child, but also how much of my child do need I? Mm. So how how much child needs the mother? Mm-hmm. And every time I tried to Google this phrase, it changed the phrase in how much mother needs the child. So Mm -hmm. it was just no question Mm -hmm. for Google, how much a mother needs to be with her child, not the child to be with the mother, but the mother needs also to be with the child. And I think this is uh, some, you know, if we do not discuss this, um, not not even in politics, um, um, what harm is done also on, 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 on women and on mothers that you take away their children, you know, most women, most uh, for, for most women, it is hard, you know, it breaks your heart. At the first doesn't time. make us happy. No, it doesn't no. make us feel and then better. They tell, and then they tell you, you know, you have to get over this, you know, your child is happy here. Oh, yes, it cried the first time, but then it's silence. So, so, so you are the problem. So if you, if it breaks your heart in the morning, when you give away your child, they tell you, you are the problem. If you look happy, then your child will be happy. So that I feel bad as a mother, um, that I'm, that this is a problem. I have to, to, to get over this. And I say, no, we don't have to get over this because what you cut also cut away. It's not only, it's not only that your child has, hasn't the possibility to learn from you as a mother and to, to, to learn from your role model, but also you don't grow as a mother. You know, uh, we have to learn this too. It is, you know, yes, yes, I am, you know, uh, you give birth, but you know nothing from the start. So, so also mothers and fathers need to spend time with their children, not because it's good for their children, but it's good for themselves to learn how to be a mother, to make mistakes and make it better afterwards, and to train communication, um, to train to understand nonverbal messages from your child and this is why this this in this uh, relationship between mothers and children is so special you know in in in, in a lot of languages we, we we call the first language the mother language so why are we doing this because it is you know um this we teach our children to speak and we are the ones normally that understand children even if they don't speak you know, this is an interaction you have to train. And if you cut down this interaction when you and because you give your child in, in, in daycare, maybe when it's one year old and we have 
we have uh, we have uh, 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 parts of Germany where most of the children, so seventy percent, go to daycare when they are one year old. So we cut off this inter of this interaction, and we also don't learn as mothers or as fathers to understand our children. And then they get teenagers and don't speak with us anymore, and we don't and we say, oh, so what is wrong with my child? You know, but we cut off this relationship when they were already small babies. So there is no, it's, it's, I'm, I don't need to wonder that you have no communication with each other when you avoid communication and if you don't train it. And what we also discover in statistics is that, that small children don't speak anymore very, very well, even their mother language. Because, you know, the, 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 the earlier you give them to daycare, the less they speak. Mm -hmm. they need Grace, they need Grace. they need an adult speaking with them to learn language yeah you know? I, I think the statistics say that uh the the parent when the parent is speaking to the child they speak to them at a little bit higher level than they understand so yes. there's always some learning there but if you're if you're two years old and you're always among two-year-olds you can't leave and there's then there's nobody there's nobody giving you that cue to learn a little to to be striving for just a little bit more learning yeah I, um i think everybody that's who has raised a child uh, it, it knows this you know there is an age about when they are two or so where they really start uh, uh, speaking um mm -hmm. and in that time you know with with small children all the whole day around me you know uh as, at mid time, I was tired already. You know, it is an, it is you. You are correcting the whole time. Your you, you, your child is telling, trying to tell something. You correct it. it, it the child repeats, and this is a ping pong the whole day. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is how children learn to speak. They tell you something or try to tell, and you correct them, and they understand. They repeat, and after a few repetitions, they tell it in the right in the right way. So this is how children learn. And if they, mm -hmm. if you give them in groups to grow up, then you have one day nurse with about six or seven children she has to teach to, to, so she cannot respond she cannot respond even if, and she, if she does respond she'll respond to the child who needs the most help yes yes so so a lot of children just don't don't talk anymore very much they don't learn mm. even even their mother language is not so mm. uh, in not, uh, in they they don't they learn it very late to speak uh, and not very um, with, with many differences and uh, um, mm. so the vocabulary is um, yes speak, the vo maybe. yes yes because speaking speaking is is also it it is a training so so um, and if you if you don't learn to speak properly it's later in school you know you it, it, it affects your whole life. It affects your whole life. So this is an important job to do for parents to teach your children really to communicate with other people. And if you don't learn to communicate, then then this is you know uh, we put the root to to to, to a lot of problems. If if you cut up pe uh, children from communication from communicating properly with other with others. Right. So you teach your child to communicate. You teach them how to uh, engage in rough and tumble play. You know, you have, you, so you have these lessons that you learn at home. Uh, you end up with someone who, uh, you you teach uh, uh, children how to, uh, to play together in a way, because they've done rough and tumble play, they know what hurts and what doesn't hurt. So when they're in, groups of friends that are the same age, then they know how to interact with them without hurting them. So it makes them, you know, it smartens them up that way. There's all these things that can be done at home and not just with the parents, but with older siblings, right? With older and younger siblings, then they learn all of this. And those are also kids who know just a little bit more or your brother who knows a little bit less than you. So then you're the teacher, you're only three and they're only two and already you're the teacher. You know that is—it's incredible how 
I, I can't imagine. And the, it is, uh, you know, I, I um, as a mother, you know, sometimes I just watched my children and their communication. And it was, you know, it was kind of beautiful just to see how, how they um, just instinctively um, uh, understood how to communicate different with different people. So, so uh, for for uh, for example, the boys, the boys who now had a, a, a smaller sister also. So they have a big sister, you know, and they had a younger sister. So, so, so the youngest one was kind of you know our puppy, and. Um, and you, you could see tough boys just getting calm and and and, and soft and and um, as she was a sm- a, a really cute small blonde uh, a, a girl, um, they, they you know uh, um, they they calm down and they try to explain her things and they and they talked more slowly automatically so she understood and. I, I, did, I did not need to tell them you have to slow down to talk to your little sister because she won't understand if you talk so fast. They did this automatically. They realized that that they have to talk in a different way to her so, so she understands and she learns. They just did it. And on the other hand, we have my, my uh, mother-in-law. Um, she, she stayed as an old lady the last uh, um, the last um, uh, years of her life, she stayed with us. Uh, uh, she was mm-hmm. over ninety years old, and uh, she mm-hmm. could not hear anymore. Very, very, very good. And I did not have to tell this to to all the children. But when they talked to grandma, they they uh, um, they they um, t- talked louder and took care that she watches them. To, to to look her in the eye so she could understand better. They just did this automatically. They understood that with an elderly person who is not listen uh, could could not hear anymore so good, they have to also to talk different. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and this was just a natural training in a big family with different ages and with people with uh, uh, different capability. Um, they just trained naturally how to re- to respond on this and i did not have yes. to tell it to them it was it just they discovered it themselves that it works only like this and they discovered you know in the morning when we all had to leave for for school and kindergarten you know it was always rough times in the morning and hurry up and and we are all late because you are late and so so you had four children we had to put in the car at the same time and and one one morning, you know, um, they discovered it would be faster if they just not shout on their little sister, but help her in her shoes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that it just makes no sense to shout at her. So put on your shoes, put on your shoes. We are late, but just go down on your knees and help her put on the shoes. You know, and this is you know this is social. Uh, this is discovering how to be a social being and to to help other people uh, rather than shouting on them that they are doing something wrong. And yeah. this is training yeah. within families. And you know, this all is going down as families cannot spend time together. That not even sisters and brothers spend time together. We learn from from this interaction in families. We learn how to be as a, a responsible human being when we are adults, and then it's easier for them when they are adults because they know how to behave. They mm-hmm. see other people. They realize their problems. They understand non non verbal communication because they are trained on this. And children who are not trained on this, they will have it harder when they go to, uh, in the, in a working place. You know, sometimes. Uh, um, they they have to learn everything children can learn in families. Sometimes they have to learn when they are adults or it leads to problems because they do not know how to behave properly because nobody taught them when they were small. Yeah, that's right. And uh, we're seeing <laughs> in the feminist movement, don't have any children, so there aren't as many children. So then maybe there aren't siblings because you've put off having kids until you're so old that you can only have one child. If you're lucky, maybe you only get one. So then that child 
uh, doesn't have as much opportunity to learn from their siblings. And then they go to school and they have, and this, the school has to have a different role now because now it has to take on some of the roles that would have been taken on by family. And so but it's, it is, been, it's too much for up. the schools. It's too yeah. much for the school, you know, even a really good school, even really good teachers. And I'm, I'm glad that we still have good schools. We have good teachers, but, you know, we expect too much from them. It was not meant like this. You know, it is uh, uh, it is not their job just to educate. Uh, uh, how they should get ch children that are already uh, uh, socialized in their families mm -hmm. and then they can be educated. But if, if teachers spend time to socialize them first, then we waste time that we need for the education. Mm -hmm. So, so there's just too much we expect from schools and from teachers just because we as families have no time and, um, they cannot, uh, they cannot do this. It, uh, so uh, so uh, this expectation that is also made by politics, you know, that now it, uh, we, we have we make more and more uh, schools for the whole day. We did not have this in, in, in Germany. It was that the uh, schools, uh, school ended at midtime and, and you go home uh, for lunch. So this was the normal uh, uh, school life in Germany. But in, mm -hmm. in the last 10 years, it's... It, um, it changed a lot, so they, so that uh, parents and also the mothers could work the whole day and not only until lunch. And they made more and more schools for the whole day. So our children spend most of their time; they are awake, and this is a, a, an important part of the day. Um, they spend in groups in schools with strangers teaching them. Um, and there they now should learn everything, not only being educated, but also being a proper social being, a responsible man or woman. And this is too much. There are things that much. are not learned that you, you, so they should educate children in, in at school. But this teaching about what it means to be a proper human being is something that the whole society and especially family has to give to the next generation. And um, and we have more and more children who are not taught. Yeah, I think that's a good place to end. I think that's a very important uh, point, and it's good to end on an important point. Thank you, Tammy. It was so nice thank, to thank talk. Thank you. Nice to talk.